So, hello, I'm Claire Croft, uh, an associate professor of dance and American culture at the University of Michigan, as well as one of the faculty advisory members for the Center for World Performance Studies. And I'm here talking with Queen Gabby, the queen of Detroit JIT. We're gonna talk a little bit about um, her life as an artist, find out a little bit more about what JIT is, and also hear a little bit about how she's navigating being an artist in the pandemic. So I thought we might start with, you know, I've always sort of been taught that JIT comes out of sort of seven, like 70s, early mid 70s culture in Detroit. People often talk about the jitterbugs um, and also some of the ways it had to do with different gang and community cultures in Detroit at the time. So I thought I'd ask maybe, I'm curious how Detroit JIT came to you. How did you first learn about JIT and what made you interested in it? Um, I learned about it when the first time I ever saw it, I was like in the fifth grade. Um, I was at a parade. Um, I remember seeing these uh, older guys and I was like, yo, like, whatever you're doing is crazy. <laughs> I just didn't know what it was, but I was like instantly attracted to it. I was like, wow. So then I also saw it again when I was about in the seventh grade and I was like, oh, this is like, this is amazing. So I was definitely always intrigued by it. And then with being in school, it was always around like where it'd be at the talent show, um, where it'd be like in the school hallways at the parties is always a part of the culture because it was that and this other dance style um, that was in Detroit and um, Inkster that was called hip rolling so those are pretty intertwined like people knew how to jit people knew how to hip roll and then if you just knew how to dance you just knew how to dance in general so um, I did hip hop for a while and then um, later down the role, one of my schoolmates um, taught me how to jit. And um, I was like, as soon as he taught me, like, I was like, yo, I really like this. Um, I mean, even though I had always been attracted to it, I'm like, as far as me learning it and wanting to pursue it, I'm like, yeah, this is it for me. And um, after that, um, I kept learning it. And um, just kept pursuing it seriously. Like we started dancing and we carried it beyond high school and started carrying it into the professional world. And it just, it's just ever, it's always been a part of my life for like a long time, but I've always been attracted to like, attracted to the explosiveness, um, the creativity, like just the whole dynamic of it. It's just something that fits me. And it's just, now it's just a big part of my life. Um, watching a couple of interviews you've done, I know you often talk about how JIT kind of gets grouped together with other social dance forms, like as footwork, um, thinking about how footwork lives in Chicago too, and Agreed. other sites in the Midwest. Yeah, sure. And, but I know you've talked some about, sure, it can be called footwork, but really the whole body's involved. I wonder if you can tell us a little bit what you mean by the whole body being involved. So like if we walked into a room and how would we recognize, so, oh, that person's doing the JIT? Um, basically with JIT, so um, as far as the full body involved, because um, I've taken like other classes and things and like other footwork cultures, especially since I've uh, been traveling to other places and um, I just know that they're more centered around the feet. So with JIT, um, we have different foundations and aspects of our dance that inc incorporates more than the feet. Like we have a whole upper body section. Um, that's the, we call it the Bisco. The full name is the Rambisco. But that whole movement itself has nothing to do with the feet. I mean, the feet you added in to help carry it through, but the main center focus of it is your arms and your chest. Um, we also have a thing called flagging, which is like stuff with your arms. I mean, you could kind of compare it to like voguing or whacking, but it's a full, it's complete arm movement. So 
we have two things already that's focused on your chest and your arms. And that's why I say it's a full body dance. And then even with us going to the ground, we have floor work movement. So not only is it about us standing up, we have a whole foundation that's based upon floor work. So it's basically you're hitting every region. When I'm like when I'm jitting, I literally have to use every region of my body like in form of dance because I'm either gonna use my arms, my feet, I'm gonna go to the ground. Even your head comes into play when you're doing certain movements because your head can carry certain movements as you're dancing. Like if you just keep your head stiff the whole time, it's not gonna flow right. So it's just like, it's literally a head to toe dance. It's just that because of the uh, dances is grouped with, um, they focus on the feet. And then because our feet are generally moving so fast, um, they focus on the feet. But um, the base of jit is not even a fast dance. Like the base of jit is done to slower music. Um, that's the purity of it is to do it to slow music. So even when I'm teaching someone, I don't teach them the fast music. I teach them to slow music because if I want them to have like the pure form, they have to learn it to the original music. It didn't start getting sped up to around like the 90s. And then that's when the ghetto tech era came in, which is like ghetto techno because the base of JIT is centered around techno music. And then when they sped it up, they called it ghetto tech because they added, they sped it up and then they added different elements into it. Um, but that's what's primarily the 90s. And then that's how the dance started getting faster. So, but, um, now it's um, now it's kind of like in between because most of that generation is getting older and you have some of us that are like are still younger so it's like a mix because the older generation is kind of like i don't want to move that fast <laughs> uh, so some i might i go back and forth sometimes i'm like look i'm not trying to dance that fast and sometimes i'm like all right i'm ready to get it so <laughs> it just depends but the older generation they're like it's a it's a no for me so so we're kind of going back to that so but yeah that's just basically it's a head to toe dance because we have so many like elements within it um so for folks listening who are really intrigued by hearing gabby talk about this um this interview is also going to be paired with a video she's making for something i curate called daring dances surviving and thriving so if you're listening and thinking, I wish I could like try this out or see what she's talking about, there'll also be a video you can check out on the Daring Dances website, which we'll link to here, um, giving you a chance to stand up and try out a little bit of JIT in your home. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And that series is one I started curating once we went into lockdown last March trying to figure out how to dance at home, which makes me want to go on rewind a little bit. And back in that other life we were living pre COVID, I wonder right. if you could tell us a little bit about what you were up to dance wise, um, January, February of last year, what did it look like to be Queen Gabby moving through Detroit and other sites where you were dancing? Uh, well, around that time, I was like busy, like the, my year started off busy for sure. Um, I was back and forth between um, Detroit and LA. Um, I was teaching in Detroit. Um, I was working with an artist, um, a, a rap artist in Detroit. So I was doing performing shows and things of that. Um, then I was also in LA. Uh, I, I was teaching in LA and I had just got signed to an agency that was in LA. So like things were going <laughs> at the time, you know, things were getting real busy. So, I mean, it was cool. It was a good January, February. I'm like, oh yeah, 2020 is about to be off a good start. Let's go. <laughs> and then literally whoop, <laughs> stuff just came to a halt. <laughs> it was so crazy. So um, yeah, I, I was definitely teaching and performing. And so, so I'm looking forward. To oh, go ahead. How have you been navigating COVID? How have you managed to keep dancing and keep making art during the pandemic? What's been your strategy? 
Um, my strategy has been kind of bouncing back and forth between LA and Detroit to keep working as an artist. I mean, of course, I've like done other things as well, um, but more so I was bouncing back between, like when, if LA was more open, I would do stuff in LA. If Detroit was more open, I would do stuff in Detroit. So um, like, I remember at one point in the summer, Detroit was more open. So I was there for about a month and I was just working there. So I was doing that. LA has pretty much since the summer been kind of locked down. Originally it was like open, but it's been pretty much locked down. <laughs> but they have, and then a lot of the studios have closed and um, they do have a couple that's open, but a lot of them are closed. So really Detroit is where I've been working at as far as teaching private lessons. I've done like a workshop or two where we have, I was supposed to do a workshop in November but then literally the weekend I was supposed to come they put the order back so it's just like it's just been situations like that like it was two or three different instances that I was going to fly out there and then like a week or so before I was supposed to fly out there things got shut down so then so I've also been teaching online like how we're doing the zoom interview I've done zoom classes zoom workshops private lessons through Zoom, just things like that. Like everything has pretty much been either, I've either been Detroit with small sizes or I've been remotely like doing things over video calls. So. How has that changed or affected the way you think about your dancing? Um, it definitely was like, put a lot of stuff in perspective. Um, I don't, I, okay, I could say it puts stuff in perspective more so for a lot of people around me, but even myself, because it kind of made you think like, okay, so I'm a dancer, this is what I do, but they skip, but um, how do I want to expand what I'm doing beyond like just booking a show, booking a workshop, like how do I sustain myself in a situation like this? So you kind of have to start thinking like, outside the box, you know. Um, I, I know I do have people that were completely like um, discouraged from it, which I understand because everything affects everyone differently and this is just a crazy time in general. So I completely understand that for sure. Um, for myself, I kind of was like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna just take this downtime to really focus on my art and my content and um because a lot of times I usually have a lot of stuff going on and I was like all right I have free time to do what I want to do so let me let me focus on this so that when um it opens back up that I'm I'm ready for whatever we're going to be like you know so I mainly just been focused on creating my art right now and but still like making sure like I hustle and bustle and do what I need to do because I mean you could do your art all you want to, but if you got zero dollars <laughs> in your pocket, then it's like, what can you do? You know? So I just more so turned into okay, you need to hustle mode and really like just focus on creating stuff that will help sustain you moving forward. So that's been my my uh, objective is to you know create create things that will create opportunities for me when we do have a chance to get back to whatever our new normal is because this is crazy but I mean we've got to figure out what our new normal is going to be but I know for the arts it's definitely taking a toll because like I said I've been in LA and we had these major dance studios and like all but one of them have shut down so it's just it's just wow like LA went from a booming place to have be a dancer to like the communities like non-existent and then even in Detroit like Detroit we have a few dance studios my friend owns a dance studio um and then it's a couple other dance studios and it's like they're just trying to find ways to navigate to stay open but not break the rules but still be able to save their business you know so it's just like as artists and dancers we're just trying to find different ways to make this still happen. But I know like um, 
I have done like a lot of Zoom stuff, which is cool. I always prefer the in-person, but Zoom, I mean, we got to do what we have to do. So, you know, if that's the way, you just got to make it happen until you can't, you know, so. Do you dance or train much at home alone, given circumstances? Or I guess I'm thinking about how JIT feels like a really social dance for you know like there's something yeah. about doing it with other people whether it be in like a more battle scenario or class or something like I agree. You, is it yeah what do you what do you do when you're alone how do you find the energy for it um I just kind of mentally put it within myself like hey if you want to get better if you want to stay you know I'm kind of like I don't want to decrease my level I want to at least maintain it or go above it so I'm like you have to train like it was times at point where I was I got kind of like all right I'm tired of dancing by myself I don't feel like doing this you know <laughs> so I definitely have those moments but then I kind of have to just like psych myself into like hey if you don't train like you're gonna fall off because legit is weird like if you don't practice you will fall off like that and then you look at yourself and be like all right, I need to pull it together. <laughs> so I just, that kind of just keeps me going. Like if you want to do it at a high level, you have to keep training. Then I kind of just watch like, not even like on purpose, like I'll watch a documentary. Like they have one about um, Bull, the Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan. And I was like watching that and I kind of got motivated from that. Like, wow, like he really, you know, was on it. And I'm like, okay, if I want to be, like, great or whatever, then I have to be on it more, and then also, like, I just remember, like, how one of my mentors I had before trained, and he was, like, amazing, and I remember the way he trained, and which is why he was the way he was, so I was, like, all right, <laughs> it's just basically, I just find different ways to motivate myself, because I used to be an athlete, so I think of it as, like, I mean, dancers are still athletes, but, you know, I used to play, like, sports, so I just think of it as, like, a sport, and I think of it as from an athlete mindset, because JIT is kind of related to sports, because it's a competition, you have the battles, you know, it's just things like that, so I'm kind of just kind of, I just motivate myself to be, like, I don't want to be crappy <laughs> so if I don't want to be crappy you're gonna have to you know turn on this music <laughs> but it does, it does get hard at times because it's like all I have is myself to practice with so it, it definitely does get hard at times to push yourself because a lot of times like if I'm dancing with other people like if they like hit something that I think is like wow or you know you just have a real solid round it will motivate me to want to go out because I'm like all right you just hit something crazy I want to dance right now <laughs> so I gotta you know I don't know it's, just, it's basically I'm just psyching myself out <laughs> yeah. that's the best way yeah. for me to describe it but yeah I still train I get lazy at times but I still train <laughs> So my last question is, you know, pre-COVID when you were traveling more and during COVID when you're sort of moving between Detroit and LA, um, it's clear that representing Detroit is really important to you. I mean, even from looking at it right now. <laughs> what is it about Detroit you want to represent by being a person doing and teaching JIT in other places? What is it you hope people think about uh, Detroit by learning this dance form? I think I want them to get like a sense of our identity beyond like what they see on like television or movies because you know when I talk to people the first one of the first things they usually say to me like oh <laughs> you know what I'm saying like I heard it's like uh, crazy out there like you know and that's like okay that's just what you hear from social media or the media in general. But when you actually come, that's why I tell people like, come to Detroit. Like, I mean, not right now, but just <laughs> <laughs> before and after I'm like, come to Detroit. Like I would tell them about like the techno fest, like just the different arts things we have down there. Just like I, I tell them there's so much culture and that's kind of what I want people to understand. Like there's so much culture within Detroit. Um, 
which is why when I've gone to other places, I kind of, it's not a knock on them, but it's kind of like, it made me appreciate Detroit more because I'm like, when I look at Detroit, I can tell what it is. And when I see the people, I can tell where they're from. You know, it's like, it's just, it's a, it's a culture. It's a, a way of moving. It's a way of living. It's a way of like the way you speak, the way you dress, the way, you know, so I, when I jit and try to bring it to other people, I want to give them that feel like I dance to uh, modern day music, um, like R and B, rap, pop. Like I've done videos to that, but when I'm teaching somebody, like I'm playing just our techno music because in order for you to learn to dance, you have to learn where it comes from, and I want them to feel the sound of this in the spirit of the city. So I make sure I play that music whenever I'm teaching somebody. Um, and I just let them feel like the soul that comes from it. Cause within our JIT, um, you can feel the soul of Detroit with the way how we move. It's like a mix of grittiness and smoothness, which I feel like is a, is a good way to um, express Detroit. And it also comes down to like how we, like how we dress, like how we go about things. It all ties in together because with JIT it's like flashy because the, the mood of Detroit and like it's to be flashy <laughs> like you want to come out there when you jay, you want to have your nice outfit on you know you might mess up your shoes but that just comes with the territory because <laughs> I've messed up a, a nice amount of hairs <laughs> it's just that it just it's just like this arrogant but you're not really arrogant like attitude that just happens like that's the best way for me to describe like someone when you're jit so when I'm teaching and showing people that I just want them to see like what else we have to offer besides the negative stuff like you know that we got some soul to us that we got this dance that a lot of people may not know about but when they see it they're like wow like what is that you know because ever since I've been these other places every time I go there and I jit they're like, yo, that's crazy. And, you know, so now that just sparks my mind to be intrigued by it. And now that's one more person that knows about our dance that may want to research it and see like, okay, what is this about? You know, then that shines more of a positive light on Detroit versus the narrative, you know, even though it's getting built up right now, like they're doing great things with downtown. Um, they're, it's just, Detroit is making a comeback for sure. So, um, I'm just trying to push that and show them like, this is it. This is Jit. And Jit has been around for so long and it's so many layers to this dance. Like, I feel like it deserves to be something that people are aware of, you know? So I'm always going to keep pushing it and exposing it to other people. Cause I'm like, hey, you need to see this dance style. Not because of me, because this dance style is just like crazy, you know? So, and it's like, something that needs to be out there so from what i've seen i've always gotten a good response from jit and um because they like how we're still dancing within our movement you know as opposed to just being about moves like we're dancing mm. <laughs> you know so it's like basically i'm just trying to just show them our art our, our culture and show them like hey this is it this is detroit so come there <laughs> come visit us <laughs> That seems like a pretty good place to wrap things up. Thanks so much for talking to us. We'll make sure in the in the video check out. We'll make put links to Queen Gabby's different social media platforms. I love following you on Instagram. So <laughs> oh, <thanks. laughs> um, hope other people check that out and also check out the surviving and thriving video that'll be up soon. They'll there'll be a link flashing up in this interview for that too. But thank you so much <laughs> for taking the time to talk to us, Queen Gabby. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs>